Pardon. Welcome everybody to today's seminar. Today we are glad to have uh, with us uh, Dr. Samit Mitra. He's coming uh, from the Department of Physics of North Guwahati uh, College, Assam, India. Uh, he's an expert in uh, relativistic magnetohydrodynamics, uh, a topic that is very interesting uh, for us and for the research that we are doing here at the Research Center of Astronomy. Uh, also in that topic, uh, he got also his uh, PhD relatively recently into 2019, uh, accretion flows around black holes. With his advisor was Professor Das. Now today you, you see the title already on, on the screen. Uh, properties of general relativistic magnetic accretion flows around black holes. And uh, we can start. Please. So, from where is the little bit of a very stable over there? Here. Yeah. Oh, okay. And for pointing, use, use the cursor. Okay. So, yes. Okay. Okay, fine. So, yes. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Shomik and I'm presenting this talk on these properties of general relativistic magnetohydrodynamic accretion flows around black holes. And you can see my collaborators are Professor Dr. Santabrata Das, Devaprasad Maiti, and Indu Kalpadi Hingya. So, okay, whether it is, yes. Okay, I'm just minimizing it. Yes, okay. So this is a brief outline of my talk. So my talk will be like how things have been started. And then there comes the breakthrough of EHT by 2019. And then what we con can contribute with our model and what kind of formalism we used and what are the results that we get. And finally, I'll end up by saying some summary. So back in 1918, it is already observed just after three years when Einstein discovered his general theory of relativity. And on 1918, Heber Curtis actually was one of the ast astronomer, he observed this curious narrow straight ray that you can see here. And that is the central luminous region that you can see. That is the today's image of this M87. So here you can see that the timeline, uh, it is more than a hundred years. So we thank the EHT for giving us this better image for that. So quite obviously our interest is to develop how to observe black hole sources. Now we know that black holes are black and they do not emit photons. So it will be very difficult to observe them directly. So we only need to rely only on the indirect matter or that is the surrounding matter that is remaining at the surrounded region of the compact object. And that is what it is showing in the right hand image by this EHT where the central dark region is the compact object or to be said the black hole and the surrounding luminous region is actually the plasma around it. So now one can ask how this matter is there. Now the matter can be there due to the immense gravity of this compact object. That is because this you can see here and also the magnetic fields around it and additionally the radiation pressure. So let us assume that the layers are differentially rotating and rubbing against each other and they will generate the viscous torque. And due to the viscous torque, there will be the generation of turbulence and the turbulence will tear the matter up inside and the angular momentum outwards and the generation of accretion is there. And that kind of quantity is measured by Sakura Sunai by the prescription alpha. But what really the alpha was back then, it was not known. It remained a black box for a long time until Balbas and Holle suggested that MHD turbulence could be a potential source to reproduce this alpha viscosity. And they have shown that weak magnetic field can tap the energy of the differentially rotating disk and trigger MRI or magnetorotational instability to transport the angular momentum outwards and disk forms. Now, not always black hole engulfs matter. Sometimes black hole can throw matter out in form of ultra relativistic jets that you can see here. And these are the essential features to understand the accretion better. And you can see that we have already received some of the papers, our earlier papers by Blanford, Zanayak and Blanford Payne, where they have shown that the energy extraction process can be done in presence of magnetic field by these huge jets. So there are several questions that I have shown you these two different pictures A and B, but it cannot be two distinct pictures. It has to be a single system. So there has to be a correlation between the accretion and the ejection mechanism, right? So 
who will give the missing link between these two so we propose that or already it has been proposed that magnetic field are the one which can actually show that the missing link between accretion and ejection mechanism altogether but what is the exact role of magnetic field in accretion ejection mechanism it's not very clear yet we have some separate separate ideas but not as a whole picture also the one of the important question is that the dynamical structure of the magnetic field it is also not known yet around the black hole sources but interestingly on last year again ehd comes up with a beautiful image of this magnetic field imprints around the m87 and they propose that the source can be can possess the vertical magnetic field or the intermediate strength of magnetic field kind of structure so we immediately has to jump on this field and address the several issues that i have mentioned already with two different ways one is the theory another one is the simulation so we already know that the last image that i have shown you that is the radio image observed by the ehd now they have come up with the alternative global grmhd simulations nowadays because they think that the radio images are very expensive and tedious so if they has to come up with the alternative image i mean alternative explanation of this global grmhd simulation where they can start with a hot turbulent accreting plasma around the black hole sources for a wide range of spin variations and they made a simulation library for a whole set of data and they have shown that their simulation results exactly reproduce the whatever ehd radio sources are observing radio telescopes are observing so that is quite good but the problem is in the simulations that there is a subtle dependency on the initial seed solutions where we want to address the issue because we have a significant scope here because no steady state grmhd solutions are available in literature so far so what do you want to do we want to start with a magnetized accretion disk and we start with a around a social black hole for the beginning part and then we evolve the transonic accretion solution solve all these equations in the steady state limit that is that means the time is not involved there and we solve the results and the results are very useful because we will get i mean we will see with the time that we have a better control on the radial profiles so we will start our results as a seed solution to provide more realistic 2d 3d grmhd simulations in future so let's start the theoretical formalism so at the right hand side image that is the disk that i am currently working on that is a cartoon diagram and you can understand that this is a axisymmetric accretion disk and in the axisymmetric accretion disk at every radial coordinate the disk is trying to maintain the vertical equilibrium so the h is the half disk width and r is this radial domain of, of the extent of the disk let's say and for the timing we have chosen the black hole mass to be 10 solar mass only okay now uh, okay here so now what we do we assume there there is this ideal grmhd approximation is there so what it suggests it suggests that the magnetic fields are frozen within the plasmas so here we have considered that the radial and the toroidal component of the magnetic field as you can see here radial and the toroidal component of the magnetic field are frozen within the disk mid plane and they will actually help in generating the accretion flow and we solve finally all these equations that i will be showing and we want to solve the transonic accretion solutions in the steady state limit and this is the car line element which is the most general axisymmetric line element that we can have now these are the equations probably i just move it a little bit away yes so these are the governing equation that you were seeing these three sets of equation those are the mass conservation equation that is actually showing that the matter coming in from the outer edge of the disk and matter releasing from the inner edge of the disk has to be balanced all the time throughout and then there will be the energy conservation of energy momentum tensor and this energy momentum tensor has actually have the form of this gr uh, i think it is not seen here this is the gr part ideal gr fluid and this is the mhd part so combined it will give you the gr mhd and then you have this homogeneous faraday's law since you do not want anything to start with the currents you only have the magnetic fields as an initial condition and further you if you want to generate okay there has to be some current so you can always uh, produce the current by calculating the del cross b so you will always get the j so for the timing we solve only these three sets of equation but applying all these simplifications in the equatorial plane and having this axis symmetry we will finally end up with the six coupled nonlinear differential equation so first one is the mass accretion rate then second one is the radial momentum equation so we need to do the projection of the energy momentum conservation on the fluid frame and if we take the radial component it will give you the radial component of the radial momentum equation 
and then you have this energy flux and then you have this angular momentum flux and these two will come because the killing vectors are there in this uh, t and phi direction only now you have these two radial magnetic flux equation and the isorotation relativistic isorotation law so both you have with here so finally i will have to solve this six set of equations simultaneously to get the transonic accretion solutions so here what i was actually trying to say earlier also that let's say you are considering a geometry where at the origin of this coordinate system the black hole is sitting somewhere at the origin and then in the y axis you have this flow velocity in your flow velocity v is the solid line and a is the first wave speed that is actually representing what is the sonic property and let's say if you are far away from the black hole you already notice that the flow has to start with a very subsonic speed but when the flow reaches close to the black hole it has to be supersonic in nature so definitely mean somewhere in this region of travel the flow need to change its sonic property here you can see the red dot is actually telling you that the flow velocity is actually changing its sonic property so this is the sound speed or fast wave speed whatever you can say so it is crossing so that means that the sonic property is getting changed right so we got the transonic accretion solution now for that i have just plotted a detailed analysis for the flow variables and the mach number profile now what is mach number mach number is the ratio of the velocity with the fast wave speed and you have the inner critical point here and this arrow is actually representing how the flow is moving inwards now velocity i have already drawn here this is the same line and i just have plotted here in the log scale that's all so this is the density profile in uh, log scale in gram per centimeter cube and this is the temperature and you can see both are scaled in a similar manner in the over the radial domain and you can clearly see that the temperature of the disk is very hot so that means the disk is very uh, hot, similar to a hot accretion flow kind of structure now this is the information about the disk height this is the aspect ratio h by r and that is actually suggesting that at every radial coordinate the h by r is trying to maintain less than 1 so that means it is satisfying the vertical equilibrium condition now the major question that one can ask is what could be the thermodynamics that i am taking care of so thermodynamics has been taken care of by the relativistic equation of state it is pretty similar to the singer gas equation that people used to use and now for simplicity since uh, singer gas involves lots of bessel function and all that stuff so it will be very difficult to implement for the complete numerical time we simplify it with another sets of equation that has been developed by ryu et al in 2006 that is also showing that the adiabatic index won't be constant you can clearly see it will be radially varying over the radial domain so then we try to plot this optical depth and it is only the due to the electron scattering so something like kappa rho into h and it will simply give you that the disk is very much optically thin so whatever amount of photons is generated in the disk it will be it cannot get a chance to get trapped it will be automatically released away so we need not to incorporate the radiation temperature or radiation kind of term is not necessary yet now this is the magnetic field profile that you can see i will be discussing again but uh, just for a 10 solar mass black hole these are the components br and b5 and you can clearly see that close to the black hole the magnetic fields are very like dominant and the radial magnetic field is the dotted line which is actually showing that over the radial domain it is more or less uniformly increasing but for the phi component of magnetic field you can see there is a drastic change over the radial domain so mostly whatever magneto fluid variables are getting controlled at it is due to the phi component of magnetic field that is just a glimpse of it this is just a plasma beta and this is the alvan speed that i will be discussing in the later slides so what do you mean by the tropics of by the b5 component so this is the contravariant component of the phi toroidal one and this is the contravariant component of the radial one okay. so since we are using the perfect general relativistic equation you are not only having these three component of field you can always convert it but in the general equation you can clearly see uh, i think not here i think here you will be able to see it so in this f mu nu i haven't uh, written the form here yes so b mu is this one okay. so it can take these four components so since we are in the equatorial plane we are neglecting the b theta to be zero and there will be only br and b5 and since we have this ideal grmh the approximation in our hand there is always a possibility that there is like a b0 kind of term will be present but you can always represent this b0 in terms of br and b theta 
so only two independent components are there so all the terms will be represented in terms of br and b5 so if you look into this equation you can clearly see this will be anyway be there the mass accretion rate equation now radial momentum equation has to be there that is one momentum and this is also a similar kind of phi momentum equation then there is the energy equation and then there are two components of this magnetic fields so one will uh, come from the radial one so this is mostly similar to this del dot b to be zero in the general relativistic form but this will be uh, something like the iso rotation relativistic iso rotation law so there is something like uh, matter is going on the phi direction and also it is getting dragged in the radial direction also so there is some kind of current charge activities are going on so this is known as ferrero's law of relativistic yes iso rotation is well understood and yes. you know, apart from black hole yes doesn't make any difference if you call it gr or not gr yes. beyond yes. a few times it's it's the same as of normal mh states yes so what was so special about b5 that you no uh, there is nothing special i am just saying that how these flow variables are uh, behaving with the radial coordinate that just i want to show okay. so now the question is the major task that we want to do is how this accretion solution topology is depending on the magnetic field strength so what we do we fix some magnetic fields at the outer edge now the question is whether it is arbitrary choice or not no it is not arbitrary because we need some transonic accretion solution so we have to tune the magnetic field in such a way such that the accretion will pass through it and finding some critical point or transonic point and then reach to the horizon so next what we do we change the magnetic field then you can see that the solution topology keeps on changing if we again change the magnetic field you can see the solution topology again changes and after a certain value of magnetic field the solution no longer passes through the inner critical point it jumps to the outer critical point and passes through this r out so this is the s4 so these kind of solutions are not reported earlier in grmhd because grmhd mostly in the domains within very few short shell radius or so so only the inner critical point solutions are available but we have shown that the outer critical points are very useful and we will be seeing why it is much more useful so this we have written in our paper yes and, and someone might might argue that you may have the, the solution that goes through r out mm -hmm. and then it forms a shock yes the other one. yes that i will show actually and that would be the most normal thing to, to expect yes so as i am mentioning that the add up solutions are mostly those solutions which are passing through the inner critical point so let's have a look how this magneto fluid variables are behaving in the inner critical point passing solutions so this is the net magnetic field net magnetic fields means i am saying under root of b mu b mu so if you calculate that you can clearly see for a 10 solar mass black hole it is very high 10 to the 6 gauss or so at the inner near to the horizon so the magnetic activity is much more higher in the close to the black hole and far away from the black hole you can see that the effect is not that much stronger now for the simulation or for the better understanding magnetic field strength won't be easy to understand but better to say in terms of plasma beta which is the ratio of gas to magnetic pressure so here you can see in this part this is the plasma beta profile so let's say this is somewhere like 100 gravitational radii after that if you start entering towards the black hole we have seen that the gradient of gas to magnetic pressure ratio and particularly the magnetic pressure gradient increases much more rapidly compared to the gas pressure and then the beta starts to drop and beta starts to drop and very close to the black hole you can see that the beta approaches almost less than 10 or sometimes it is approaching around 2 3 something like that so that means magnetic activity is much more stronger now there are some simulations so this code work actually they have done their 3d simulations and they have extracted this volume average beta parameter and they have shown that the this similar kind of beta profile can be observed there also we have uh, seen in the same paper for a thick disk model on the same paper they have shown that if you see the color bar here that is actually representing the plasma beta i don't know it is visible or not so this is 2 that means in log scale so that is in this region it is mostly around 100 but close to the black hole you can see there is some orange is kind of part so the plunging region it is more or less approaching towards one or something like that so that is what we are also seeing so there are also some uh, computationally expensive simulation of thin disk so they have also shown recently that 
this thin disk profile is also showing that the close to the mid plane of the disk it is mostly gas pressure dominated so it mostly agrees with what we are actually getting from our theoretical result now we have also noticed that the toroidal component of the magnetic field is much more dominant and it actually varies significantly over the radial domain of the disk but you can see that the radial component radial component is this one radial component variation is not there it is more more or less uniformly increasing right and obviously it is obvious that very near to the black hole since we expect that radial infall will be there so radial component of the magnetic field will be much more stronger compared to the phi one so we have actually shown the similar simulation paper also that recently begelman wrote and reported the similar kind of variation for the phi component of magnetic field it will always dominate over the radial one now the major question in accretion is whether the angular momentum is getting transported or not so here in the previous sets of equation that i have shown there is nothing the internal viscous stress is involved though no alpha is there so we only have this interplay between the radial and toroidal magnetic field components and they eventually develop a viscous stress and that viscous stress is sufficient enough to transport some amount of angular momentum but you can obviously see that the range of angular momentum transport is very less from 3.10 only one order of magnitude is changing so that is only because we are not incorporating the theta component of magnetic field and we are in the steady state so it will be very challenging to expect the huge amount of angular momentum transport but even though it is transporting now how do you quantify the angular momentum transport it is obviously due to the maxwell stress because the only dissipative term can come from there itself so we try to calculate the effective viscosity developed within the disk as the ratio of maxwell stress divided by the gas pressure and from there we notice that this came out to be radially varying and that is very interesting because sakura suna has suggested that alpha has to be constant throughout the domain but it is not constant and the similar result actually several numerical simulation by holly crolic then mark avara in their mad simulation they have also reported the similar kind of u shaped behavior is there over for, for this alpha variables so that is quite interesting because again steady state results are significant in reproducing all these simulation results now as i am mentioning that this alpha viscosity is only developed in the system due to the magnetic fields effect so there has to be a correlation with the alpha and the plasma beta so we try to plot it so the left hand side we plotted it for the radial domain 2 to 50 gravitational radii and we see that there is a clear distinction of two power laws and s1 and s3 if you remember these represent these three solutions actually inner passing solutions i am talking about s1 s2 and s3 so for s1 and s3 if you see for 8 to 50 schwarzschild radius if you see just follow the solid lines first so for the solid line is only for the 8 to 50 schwarzschild radius and within that regime we have noticed that the power law index is more or less 0.40 to 42 and if you notice the similar paper by local sharing box simulation results they have also shown this particular solid line where they have taken the uh, mean of alpha or the averaged alpha as this tx by the p gas that power law is also 0.53 which is in close agreement with our theoretical result but interestingly if you see this dashed line which is in 2 to 8 schwarzschild radius there you can find a more steeper power law and that we expect is due to the high magnetic activity at the inner region of the disk so definitely that might lead to some new physics which we will be taking care of in the future works now we also have uh, plotted several plots for this best fitted power law because that is what people are mostly interested in starting as a simulation to start the initial condition so here you can see for the density profile it mostly follows the r to the power minus 3 by 2 or what adapt solutions are there because n is mostly one i don't know uh, it is not showing here but n is one actually yes okay and sorry and for the p gas and p mag there is a certain deviation from the simulation results because we are incorporating the transonic accretion solution into the picture so the transonicity might change the power of it so that's what our claim is now let's say we focus only about the accretion solutions which are passing through the inner critical points right so up to now i have discussed accretion solutions by fixing some boundary conditions at the outer edge of the disk and we change the magnetic field at the outer edge and see how the solution changes but here we started with the inner critical point 
and we change the magnetic field strength at the inner critical point and we see there lies two distinct domain of br if you see panel b and panel c so within that magnetic field strength there exists the closed accretion solution and this right hand side parameter space is actually showing the same that is for a given magnetic field you will have the closed parameter space for any range of e and l so that is the representation of the 3d parameter space now one can ask so this closed solution means it's a, these are unphysical because these are not connected to the outer edge of the disk so that is absolutely right so we are also saying that this is unphysical so we need some outer passing physically motivated supersonic branch if that can connect with this closed accretion solution and have a shock kind of structure now what is shock let's say you start with the outer edge of the disk you pass through the outer critical point and then you start to enter towards this black hole now what will happen you feel that there will be a phi component barrier like the centrifugal barrier will be there and the centrifugal due to the centrifugal barrier just imagine you are coming radially and there is a barrier in front of you what you will do you will try to move around so definitely that is what it is doing that the matter starts to accumulate around that region and but one can ask how long matter can accumulate there because matter cannot hold for a such a long time that in that barrier so yes that is also true that the centrifugal barrier suddenly triggers a discontinuous transition somewhere there and then the flow jumps from the supersonic branch to the subsonic post shock branch that is the psc here and then again what happens the post shock flow gains the radial velocity and post shock flow gains the radial velocity and starts to move towards the inner edge and passing through the inner critical point become transonic and fall into the event horizon and then it becomes physical the picture is physical and one more point you can see here for a given magnetic field strength for a given energy and angular momentum flux you can always have three multiple critical points all together when r in and r out is the transonic saddle type solutions but you can have a spiral type solution which remains unphysical in nature but your shock will always happen to lie within this middle critical point and the outer critical point that we have always seen now there is a possibility that there can be a stability issue can always arise for the shock so if you plot the pressure profiles you will always see i mean that is the trr rr compo r component of the uh, like energy momentum tensor that will give you the pressure so for that if you plot that you will see the pre shock and post shock branch that means for this outer critical point passing branch and for this inner passing branch if you just plot it will intersect at two different points so one of the intersection point will always give you the unstable shock that we already discarded and we only take the stable part so that is with the stability and now what are the condition that you need to look for so first condition is across the shock the energy has to be balanced then there has to be the momentum balance that means the angular momentum as well as the radial momentum and if you see the radial momentum equation it will give you the pressure actually and now then for the magnetic field since it is different from the rankin huguenot shock condition for this there will be also an additional condition due to the magnetic flux equations so the flux is also getting balanced here now with that if i plot the aspect ratio that i have showed in the very first figure just plot and make a reflective symmetry the entire picture will look like this so let's say some cold matter is coming out from here sudden region from this 1000 gravitational radii and as it enters towards the black hole it suddenly gets accumulated and starts to get puffed up and due to the shock compression the shock region is getting very hot and it is very dense the density will also very increased and then what you feel you will see that there is a post shock corona kind of structure will form or what we call as compton cloud so those this region is actually um, like a collection of hot electrons in this region right so let's imagine some amount of cold matter is releasing some photon which have less amount of energy those are known as the soft photons now soft photon is coming towards this post shock corona what will happen it will get inverse comptonize in that post shock corona due to the hot electron and it will radiate hard radiations so that is what we are observing but there are different different models so one of the model is the shock accretion model so since till now there is no such work on the steady grmhd including shock so we were the one to report it very soon it is already been done and we will be reporting it so now there is an interesting case so we wrote a recent paper with my advisor that just in the previous shock condition if you see the first condition is energy is conserved right now in reality do you expect that such a puffed up condition puffed up region is forming and the mass outflow or mass loss can be there from that region 
so energy can it be balanced there definitely there is some possibility that shock has to be dissipated so we have taken into that work also this is the uh, mach number profile for extremely rotating black hole car point 99 so for that we have seen that you can see the violet line is actually showing delta e equals to zero. That means when the pre-shock and post-shock branch energies are equal. Now, if we say that there is some amount of delta e energy that we are extracting it from the shock, now whether there is a possibility that shock can happen or not, first we checked and we checked yes. So for that particular parameter, we can actually go up to 0 0.0167 amount of energy that can be extracted from the Push pre shock branch to the post shock. And again, still we can have shock. So, this amount of energy we can extract and the shock front moves towards the inner region. Now, this is a parameter space plot for E versus lambda, which is actually showing that what is the minimum amount of energy in the parameter space you can have. So, that means you can see this is the minimum energy. So, since it is a relativistic case, it is less than one, but in principle, it is a negative energy, right? So, that means this amount of energy are allowed to extract from the shock region. So, we have plotted it. So this I'll be discussing later. So this we have plotted the left-hand side plot for the dissipative shock model that for different range of spin variation, that is the car parameter for spin zero, the maximum amount of energy that you can extract from shock is 1%. But for extremely rotating black hole, we have noticed it will be 4.4%. And here is actually the model that I'm actually try trying to tell you that this is a subcapillarian disk at the outer edge. And then suddenly the matter gets popped off and forms a like torus kind of structure, uh, like Compton cloud is there. And this is the centrifugal barrier that you can understand because uh, shock forms only when there is a gravity and the centrifugal barrier comes in very close to each other. And there is this barrier kind of structure forms. So from that barrier region, and if you imagine that there is a funnel wall is there, Within this to centrifugal and this funnel wall region, there is always a possibility that matter can get out or the mass outflow can happen from there. So those kind of things are a little bit different from the wind, like Blanford pain or Blanford Janaik. But there is there can be a possibility of forming weakly power jets or bipolar outflows kind of structure. So since even in presence of GRMHD, we are getting shock, and we are we have seen that some amount of energy can be extracted in GRHD case. So it is inevitable that for GRMHD also, we can extract some amount of energy from the shock front. And that can also contribute to power some amount of Blanford pain wind or some weakly power jets. So finally, I want to just make a summary of what I mentioned. So we have analytically solved everything uh, in the radial domain, in the equatorial plane. So we have received the global structure of the accretion solution passing both the inner critical point and outer critical points. And we also notice that the toroidal component of the magnetic field is much more dominant over the radial component. We also find the new power law fitting at the inner edge of the disk. Now, interestingly, I haven't shown a plot, but we have seen that the inner critical point passing solutions are magnetically more active than the outer critical point because the plasma beta, when we plot, we have noticed that the plasma beta is always close to one at the horizon for the inner passing solutions. But for the outer passing solution, it is remaining higher than 50. Then we have seen that the shock study for the accretion solution in the GRMHD case. But one can ask, why should we study shock? Because shock solutions are useful because it has a higher entropy content compared to the non-shock branch or the without shock-free branch. Now, simulation results are matching very closely with our results, particularly the plasma beta, alpha, then the magnetization parameter, all those things. So the steady state solutions are useful in understanding the features. Now, the takeaway note that we can take from here is that steady state solutions are not very suitable in explaining these instabilities like MRI, then turbulence, all these features. But if you want to understand the radial profiles of the flow variables in a better way, you always need to have in your side the steady state solutions, which will give you much more information to have a control on these radial profiles of these whole sets of solutions. And now what you can do, once you have the steady state solution, with this solution, you can start and you can actually generate the boundary condition or initial seed condition and that you can put in your numerical simulations. And who knows, it might give you a better simulation or more realistic simulation for future. So we are looking forward to it. So thank you. And I'd, I'd like to thank Professor Kantopoulos for this opportunity. Yes, thank you.
Thank you very much. Uh, it's time for questions. First from the audience, yes, here, please, Yanis, go ahead. Have you seen such puffing up of the disk and the shock forming in any GRMHD simulations? We have seen- Or uh, anyone else? Not in GRMHD, we have seen this in MHD and hydrodynamic simulations, it is there that the puffed up kind of nature, we have done a work. It is not published, but we have done some work in Pluto. In Pluto code, we have seen that if you start from an injection radius, and let's say we did the steady state solutions, and we have this height profile, right? So we calculate the theta. So R also we have, and we have the theta. Because tan H over R, tan inverse H over R will give you the theta information. So we start by scaling some, I mean, by some scaling, we, some, we put some energy, angular momentum, and all this profile, and the velocity, sound speed, angular momentum, and we just prove it. So for this theoretical domain, we get the shock. Now we evolve the simulation at the same with the same initial condition at some injection radius, and we see at certain time it will again reach at I mean the shock will form at exactly at that location, very close to that, and some puffiness is there, some kind of outflow, kind of wind, kind of structure is there. For hydrodynamics, it is for sure. And what drives this wind? This outflow? So that is mostly because of this thermal uh, like thermal properties, like the gas pressure. It's a thermal. Yes, but that's where the interesting point is because we are observing this kind of shock in GRMHD also analytically. So if we can do this similar set of simulation by some injection radius or something else, we might be able to see the same thing because you cannot stop uh, your simulation to eject some amount of matter just from the boundary layer. It is always there. So we need to look forward to it. Yes. So it's not the fundamentally GR effect what you're describing. It's the um, MHD effect or hydro effect. Yes, it's mostly a hydro effect. Yes. Hydro effect. But how, I, mean, I want to say is that even though it is a hydro effect, but even in the presence of magnetic field, it can enhance the effect. That's why I, the plot I show that uh, recent paper that in GRHD we wrote the paper that this amount of energy is extracted. Let's say for short shell, we are expecting only 1%. Who knows, I didn't try it yet, but probably for MHD case, the energy extraction will be a little bit higher than that. That is my next target I and mean, I want to see that. Yes. Let me check if there are some questions from people. I don't see any raised hands. So then thanks to speaker again. Time to discuss. Ah, sure, sure. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.